We are back now on the show to continue looking over some of the games from this past week in Week 8 and diagnosing, talking about some of the the events that occurred and some of these pretty pretty massive games because looking at this game now, the, the Texans and the Indianapolis Colts, Houston and Indy met for the second time on Sunday and again, same result as the first time. Houston won in the same way by narrow margins. This time Houston won 23-20 to stay on top of the ASC South, and now they go to 6-2, and two, sole possession of the division, while the Indianapolis Colts drop to 4-4. Four and four. Looking at both of these games and how close the Colts played the Texans, who everybody, including myself, are very high on, and they have all the talent, they are looked upon as the favorite to, to not only win this division, but be one of the major contenders. You know, the Colts have played them very well, so... To kind of harp on my point before relating it to the Dolphins, you know the Colts, they're not, you know they're not a bad team. They're four and four. I think their record's a little bit unfair. Um, I'm sure they'd love the Jaguars game back, but um, you know they are what they are right now. But they're by far um, not a bad team. So by because of that, you know you look at these two contests over um, over week one and now just this past week between the Texans and the Colts. They um they both games have been decided by a total of five points. It was twenty nine to twenty seven in week one in Indy, and this time the game was only decided by three points. So they they've been right there. They've been um playing the Colts. They've been playing up to the uh the Texans, excuse me, the, their competition. So it is good to see by the Colts, but still um looking at this game a little bit more, Joe Mixon was a big factor in this one once again. Because you look at his week one performance against the Colts. And in week one, he had 30 carries for 159 yards and a touchdown. And now this time around, similarly, he had such a big impact. He had 25 carries, 102 yards, and a touchdown. He's the first player in NFL history to have at least 100 yards rushing and a touchdown rushing as well. In four of his first five games with a new team. So... Um, I think it's fair to say that the, uh, the acquisition of Joe Mixon has been one of, if not the most important, certainly for the, uh, for the Texans, but one of the most impactful ones for the, for just the entire NFL, for all of the transactions and additions we've seen. Um, he's been, he's been everything that the, that the, uh, the Texans would have wanted and more. So great for the, uh, the Texans to have him because, like we said on um, on the teaser a little bit, how the Colts now they're dealing with with some with some losses because it was announced today that Stefan Diggs officially has torn his ACL, and in a moment where the Texans are not trying to get by because they have good players, but you know they're without Nico Collins, um, they were without Joe Mixon for a while, so. You were looking to to get back to the point where everybody was back together again. We could see this Texans offense for what it really was, and now you get this news on uh, on Tuesday to really put a damper in everything. Because um, obviously Stefan's not coming back this year, and Nico should be out at least one more week, if not two, before he's back. So the the Texans have now from what was this high powered, you know, fully stacked up offense now. They're without Stefan, and, you know, Nico and Tank were, I'm assuming, the original plan, right, after their rookie years to come in and, um, you know, have a bigger role. Obviously, with Stefan Diggs coming in, you have to involve him. So, Tank Dell hasn't really been as involved as I would have liked or expected, but maybe now this is an opportunity for him. He scored in this game as well, and uh, this could be yet another opening for him to, to kind of step into this limelight and take that jump like Nico Collins did just last year. I'm still waiting for that jump from, from Tank Dell, so hopefully um, he could take advantage of, of this opportunity now to get more targets, but certainly a um, a bad piece of news for the Texans. For Stephon Diggs, too, which um, he seemed uber-motivated this year to kind of go out there and prove a point on a new team um, and kind of be on a really good contending team also, right? But unfortunately, he tears his ACL, so he will not be back for the Texans. And also, you know, how that affects free agency a little bit because he isn't guaranteed to stay there. So how that all plans out will be something, you know, to talk about later on. But 
on this game and looking at um, the performances, you know, C.J. Stroud had a bounce back game from last week where he only threw for like 86 yards. This time he threw for 285, a touchdown, and uh, had a quarterback rating of 99. Joe Mixon, I already read out his stats. He had a, an exceptional game. Stephon Diggs led all receivers with five receptions and 81 yards. Tank Dell had the touchdown in the game, four receptions for 35 yards as well. Whereas the Colts, you know, for as tight as the game was, they had some pretty good showings. You know, Jonathan Taylor coming back off an of injury, he had an amazing game, 20 yards, or excuse me, 20 carries, 105 yards, and a touchdown. Josh Downs had to get a good game, four receptions, 109 yards, and a touchdown for him as well. So the Colts, both defenses too, playing a, a big part in the result overall. So um, from the statistical standpoint, there wasn't anything that really stood out that you're thinking, oh, like this was the uh, the reason that they lost. But looking at the, the moments in this game and um, the, the scenarios and just, what happened in this game overall, looking at it in the first half, there was a very tight contested game between both of them just responding to one another. That seemed to be the theme of the first half because the one team scored a field goal, the other team answered. It was 3-3. Three to three. Then Indianapolis scored a touchdown to Josh Downs. It was 10-3, to three, but Houston again answered and made it 10-10 to 10 with a touchdown from Joe Mixon. And after that, to kind of follow off on this mirroring pattern, um, there were six straight punts combined by both of these teams after the score was 10-10. to 10. Um, And one of the biggest plays, in my opinion, that occurred after, you know, we got this period where both teams are struggling, both offenses can't get anything going. We see six straight punts by both of these teams. The biggest play came to me right before halftime when... Um, Anthony Richardson faced a third down, a third down and three or four, if I'm not mistaken. And there was around like 20 to 25 seconds left at this at this point, if I'm not mistaken. And on third and three, he was backed up pretty much into, into his own red zone, right? He was nowhere near a safe spot for him to throw a pass. But that was the play that was called. He, I'm sure, makes a bad read on where he wants to go with the football and instead of hitting instead of hitting Michael Pittman or actually Josh Downs I believe on a short little you know choice route over to the right side he he throws it directly to Jalen Petrie the Texan safety who was just standing right there and they return it a couple yards and now immediately right before halftime the Texans are in fantastic position to score a touchdown or at least get some points back and that's exactly what they do because off of that turnover with 17 seconds left Houston gets a touchdown to go up 17 to 7 a touchdown scored by Tank Dell and in a spot where the Colts were going to go into halftime pretty much tied you know no one was feeling great they make such a big error um not only to to highlight Anthony Richardson but you know, to, to just really put your team in a questionable and a precarious spot because you, no one is, no nothing's going to be lost going into halftime 10 to 10, right? You're just going to regroup, reanalyze everything, you know, it's even. But by making that mistake on a third and three, third and four, to throw the ball in that scenario, I feel like there's more risk than reward in that scenario. So I don't know, you know, if Shane Steichen called the play or if it was just, you know, Anthony Richardson just throwing it anyway, knowing that it was a bad read. Regardless of the fact, um, it made a big impact because now you go into halftime losing by seven points instead of being even. And um, in the second half, it got a little bit more interesting. Indianapolis made it real close again with a touchdown from Jonathan Taylor. And the score at that point after that touchdown was 20 to, 20 to 23. And still... The Colts were losing. They had a great chance when they recovered that fumble in um, in the, the Texans drive where they were already in the Colts' red zone. They fumbled the ball away. They, they recovered it. The Colts' defense recovered it, and they had a chance there not only to take away points from the, the Texans but to, to get some back, but they didn't do anything with it. But even still, the, 
the Colts had a chance in this game to only need a field goal because they forced the Texans to punt again. So Indianapolis was going to have the ball last. They only needed a field goal, and there were still 54 seconds left. But ultimately, nothing really came about this drive, and um, they even couldn't get the Hail Mary off because um, I believe it was Daniel Hunter who came in and sacked Anthony Richardson again, um, or it was somebody getting to him before he can unload the uh, the Hail Mary ball. So... Yeah, the the Colts lose a pretty big game here, 23 to 20, and Anthony Richardson's struggles do kind of shine a little bit here because at one point in the first half, um I think he was like 2 for 15 or something like that, which you know, we're not going to get into the whole Anthony Richardson situation on whether or not, you know, he's looking like a bust or anything like that. I think it's still way too early. Um he's only played still like a handful of games in his rookie year which he missed most of and even into into this year as well. You know, you, the Colts, drafted him for his high upside, his potential, right? So, you know, it's logical to think that you need to play him for um for him to get this experience, get better and learn off of things like that. But also, you know, um with the news that just broke today about Joe Flacco now starting, I believe that that could be something that does benefit Anthony Richardson because he hasn't really been playing lights out this season and there has been some frustrations, especially with Joe Flacco, you know, just sitting there, um, you know, and the, the struggles that he showed in the first half. I don't hate this move. And, you know, it kind of goes off of the fact that um, we saw something very peculiar happen for the Indianapolis Colts and for Anthony Richardson specifically in the third quarter of this game um, that I think aided a little bit in making this decision for uh, for the Colts. And that actually leads me into the last segment of today's show, that peculiar moment that we saw by Anthony Richardson in that third quarter where he essentially tapped out, tapped himself out of the game for whatever reason. If you guys weren't aware of it, we're going to touch on it. I'll give you my thoughts on it. And also we're going to determine if it's something that is significant enough to to kind of make this a story out of or whether or not people are just overblowing this situation. So we're going to answer that question. What did Anthony Richardson do that has everybody talking? We're going to answer that question when we return in just a few seconds. <laughs> 